Hello everybody, this is Dino Teeth with another week of comic book reviews. This is for the week of February 3rd, 2016. I'm a little late on this, I've just had a lot going on my plate. But anyway, let's get into it. Here is the Weekly Comic Shop News, uh, sponsoring a new book called Jonesy on the front and the back. So let's just take a look at it. Looks like uh, Scott Miller vs. the World kind of thing, very cutesy, things like that. Maybe dealing with teenagers in high school. Um, not not the book for me, but if it's for you, go ahead and check it out. On the inside, we've got more comic book news. We've got Walking Dead. We've got Rat Queens, Star Trek. Eh, none of these books look like they're for me, but... If you read between the text, you can probably find some books for you. Same thing on this page. I am waiting for The Last Crusade to come out. This book gets delayed because Frank Miller, <laughs> basically, will delay every book he works on. Um, I'm excited for the new Poe Dameron book coming out. Uh, I already have this book, the uh, Arkham Knight one-shot with Batgirl and Harlequin, but I will be talking about that in another video because I'm two weeks behind on my videos and I want to get up to date. So this will be in my next video for uh, February 17th. I will be reviewing the uh, Arkham Knight one-shot of Batgirl and Harlequin. But yeah, on this page, from the pictures at least, you can be expecting a review from The Last Crusade and definitely Poe Dameron when those come out. Here we've got more books, uh, Aliens, The Art of Doom, uh, things like that, just more books, and then like I said, on the back and on the front you get Jonesy. So that is it for the comic shop news of February 3rd, but let's get into the actual comics. Let's start out with Batman and Robin Eternal, issue number 18. <coughs> now, Batman and Robin Eternal is not a bad weekly book. Um, it's had some disappointing issues, that is for sure. But for a weekly book, it's not bad. But that said, $3 is a pretty hefty price to pay for a book that isn't that consistent. But uh, artwork here is nothing to like write home about, but uh, it, it does its job. I, I kind of don't like the Joker, how it's drawn, but I mean... Everyone has their own take on the Joker. But anyway, in this book, uh, Harper Rowe realizes who killed her parents. Um, and it goes deeper into the flashbacks with Batman facing Orphan and fighting Mother after last week's issue. Um, or should I say issue 17? But we see Batman fighting these two and how... They get away, and how Batman doesn't defeat them, because obviously they're in the present-day timeline uh, with Grayson and Harper and everyone. But you see their confrontation, and Mother teaches Batman, or uh, she shows Batman her plan. She says, hey, you know what? Grayson was never meant to be your Robin. We've been training someone else, and let us show you who your Robin was meant to be. And she shows him a video of two people, just a woman and a, and a guy, stealing some copper piping from a building. And we later figure out that those are Harper Rose's parents, and Cassandra Cain will murder those parents, but we all know the father gets away because the father's in prison. That's a nice ad for Batman v Superman. Um, if you didn't want to watch the movie, yeah, there you go. You got two pages of ads in your book. And this will probably be in every book, that ad. But um, <coughs> anyway, yeah, you see right here, Cassandra Kane murders the mom. The dad gets away. Uh, Harper Rowe thinks that Orphan is lying as he's telling this story. And um, basically, they just beat the shit out of each other, Batman. And then we go to the present day, and Mother releases some sort of... Uh, device that if you hear it and you're under the certain age, like maybe if you're like 16 years or younger, you start going crazy, I guess? Um, so she's releasing this on the school where Spiral is located, and all of the Spiral assassins 
are kids, so they're going to go crazy. And Grayson asks, where is Harper Row? So Harper is just chilling next to the cells, crying because she now knows the truth that her mother was assassinated by what she considers to be her friend. Um, yeah, so this was issue 18. Not bad. Not good. Um, that cover art certainly helps by Tony Daniel, even though he's not back on the interior. Um, I'll give it a 6. A 6 for me. Um, you're probably expecting like maybe a 7. A 7 for me is a good to great book. An 8 is a great book. A 9 is an excellent book. And a 10 is a perfect book to me. So that's just to clear up some of that rating system. 6 doesn't mean bad, but it doesn't mean great either. It's just somewhere uh, in between. So it's just a, it's just a good book. Um, so yeah, that's a 6. Next up, Batman Beyond, issue number 9. This one is starting to get into the vibe of the animated series. <clears throat> starting to introduce some new characters. Um, but we're still seeing the side effects of Future's End, which I just want to get rid of that shitty story completely. I don't want to hear Brother Eye again. I don't want to see Brother Eye again. I don't even want his presence to be around. I just want the Batman Beyond that I know and that I love. So anyway, we see um, Tim Drake, almost a Terry, but Tim Drake in the Batman Beyond costume trying to find Terry's little brother, Matt, which if you know from the last issue, he's gone off to Metropolis, um, which is supposedly a desert wasteland, and he has Green Lantern's ring with him, or Green Lantern's arm, which is is the mechanical arm from Future's End because all the uh, Justice League was turned into those mechanical creatures. And on the last issue, he was being followed by these three dudes, these uh, zoo creatures. Uh, <coughs> so that's basically the entire issue. Um, things get interesting again. Hey, you want to watch the movie? Here it is. Huh? But um, things get a little interesting when the Green Lantern ring starts reacting when Matt is in Metropolis. Um, he doesn't know why, but then we see this huge <coughs> double-page spread, let's see if I can find it, where he's following the ring, and it leads him to the uh, Batman Beyond Justice League. So you see, like, Superman, you see Green Lantern in there. Um, it'll be interesting to see how this Justice League is gonna, gonna work, um, Especially with, I believe, the old Bruce Wayne from the animated series. Like, just Bruce Wayne in general this time is dead, I believe. I don't know. But um, it'd be weird to see that. And then we also see another character from the animated series, um, Dr. Cuvier, which is right here. So that'll be cool. And they captured Terry, or, jeez, they captured Tim Drake. Um, and he's going to do some experiments on him in the next issue, which is called justice lost uh, so <clears throat> this one is like I said it's starting to get better it's starting to cut off the ties of futures end and uh, I believe Dan Jerkins is starting to write his own Batman Beyond story more in line with the animated show which is great that's what I want to see so this one gets a seven it's a uh, it's a great book um, Midnighter I was surprised about Midnighter number nine. Uh, the story was kind of convoluted from issues like seven and eight and everything, <clears throat> but now he has to take on the Suicide Squad, which surprisingly he does not until like the very end. But anyway, uh, he has to get into this super secret bunker that he cannot teleport into because Midnighter does have a a teleporting door that he could just travel into. So what he decides to do is put himself in a bullet, basically, like a giant bullet, and just rocket himself into it, just like smash into it, and steal something from the Suicide Squad headquarters. He realizes everybody in this base is basically dead. As you can see, there's bodies everywhere. And he's like, I don't think I'm the only one here, but he's here to just take this device and bring it back to Spiral. Um, but here he finds this speed dude, 
uh, who says, I think he says he's just about as fast as the Flash, <coughs> but Midnighter being the badass that he is, I think he just like, what, broke his leg or something with a crowbar, but it was, it was some nasty shit, like right here you can just kind of get like a sense just by these words and blood, Midnighter fucks this guy's shit up, um, and he just continues on his day, he gets the device, and <coughs> I believe he brings it to Matron, yeah, right here, he's just talking to Matron, and he says, hey, we got bigger problems, uh, things like that, yeah, that, uh, advertising is gonna get a little sick sooner or later, but, hey, it's still here, but, uh, yeah, then here he is in present day with his new boyfriend, because his last boyfriend was Prometheus, and this is where the Suicide Squad comes in, right here, and you learn about this new character who joined the Suicide Squad, this guy, <coughs> who says, I can see, I believe he says five seconds into the future, so that's how he becomes a formidable foe for Midnighter. And he does say his name. I just forget what it is. He is the Afterthought, is what he calls himself. And here he is with the other members of the Suicide Squad, with Harley and Deadshot. And then you have Afterthought. Is Afterthought going to be a big, huge member of the Suicide Squad? Who knows, but this is his first appearance in here. I believe. I don't know. I don't read Suicide Squad, but um, yeah, just fighting Afterthought and looks like the Suicide Squad has the upper hand. <coughs> so I was surprised about this book. I wasn't expecting it to be as good as it was. Um, so a solid seven. Solid seven. I wanted to see more Suicide Squad fight. That's the only reason it didn't get an eight or even a nine. It's just, it didn't deliver on that. Then we have Obi-Wan and Anakin, issue two of six, I want to say, or five. It's a limited series. And this does not disappoint. It uh, it doesn't add anything more to the story. It ended off last time where this girl didn't know what a Jedi was, and it's like a civil war on this planet. That's basically kind of where it is still. Um, there's still a civil war at the end of this issue, except... Both members of opposing sides now have to team up with the Jedi to survive. <coughs> they find this other guy um, who's on the opposite side. I think they call them... It's like, are you inside or are you outside? I think those are the names, like insiders and outsiders. I, I want to say something like that. Um, and one of them is an outsider, one of them is an insider. But uh, they both have to work together. And... I love the, the Anakin in this book, where there's one scene where they're being attacked by these creatures um, indigenous to this planet, and Obi-Wan says, no need for violence, we can just use our mind tricks on them and just have them be on their way, and Anakin can't control them. Anakin says, like, I can't just use my mind tricks, so like here you can see some of the, uh, the creatures, and he says, I can't use my mind tricks, so he just gets angry and kills them because he he can't be like his master um but he tries like he tries to so he's like hey stop whatever but then they start attacking him and he just decapitates them um and then right where he's about to say i'm sorry it goes into a flashback again with the emperor and i gotta admit i love the um emperor anakin um uh, conversations especially in the flashbacks here because they're so raw, like, he's he's teaching him to become Darth Vader, but not yet, so he's just taking him to, like, the underbelly and everything, and it looks, looks like Anakin was warped at a young age by the Emperor, um, takes him to, like, this nightclub, and then it goes back into the present, and they say everything's gonna be okay, but then you see, like, creatures on the bottom as they're trying to get away, so I like where the story's going. I still don't know what the whole deal with the Civil War is going to do. Who these two opposing sides are, I don't know much, but that's why it's a limited series. It's only issue two. Can't wait to learn more. This also gets an issue, or sorry, it also gets a seven for me because there's so many questions left unanswered, but what you get is really good. 
Next up, Rocket Raccoon and Groot. Um, Rocket Raccoon was one of my favorite series by Scotty Young. And I was kind of sad when he stopped taking over the art duties for that book. But the artist we got, this Andrade guy, is very, very talented as well. But hey, Scotty Young is still doing the writing, and he's still doing the covers, so that's cool. Anywho, <coughs> I also have to admit I love the uh, the catch-up, um, or the synopsis page. <laughs> it's just Scotty Young, I know that's Scotty Young's art, um, with Rocky Raccoon and Groot just talking to the kids from one of the issues of his older Rocky Raccoon stories. It's amazing. He's saying, like, hey, eight months ago after this whole Secret Wars shit, this is what happened. So, it's we're in a Star Wars kind of phase here where I think his name is like Lord Rakzoon or something. <coughs> Evil Emperor, anyway. Groot went all this way to find him. And this is the origin of what Groot went through um, after Secret Wars. Like, how he tracked down his friend Rocket Rakzoon. Um, let's see here. They have to get a translator because Rocket Raccoon cannot understand Groot. Which is very weird because Rocky Raccoon and Groot are best friends. So he hires this translator and he tells him the entire origin story of how Groot separated from Rocky Raccoon. Um, and it starts here. Um, like you can see, he's just going on this journey. <coughs> Sorry, he's going on this journey and he has this map written on his body, but he cannot read it. So he's going to multiple people, multiple places. He talks to Iron Man, Miss Marvel. Spider-Man, um, Howard the Duck. He talks to all these people to get answers, clues, everything. And all the while, Rocket Raccoon's just listening. Because Rocket Raccoon thinks Groot was searching the galaxy for him so he could kill him. But while Groot's telling the story, Rocket Raccoon's like, Wait, you went through all that trouble just to find me so I could be your friend? So that's basically the synopsis of this book. Um... Where he's got to had to go through like super crazy war, he had to like find Zen meditation. Like I just love this scene because it tells like all the three layers that he had to go through, and I believe it says he would face challenges of the body, of the spirit, and of the heart. So this is the body, spirit, and heart, and I was just like, that's just amazing. Um, and he like tracks down every piece on his body around the galaxy and it led him to this one place it led him to find his friend uh, Rocky Raccoon who is now Lord Ragzoon and Lord Ragzoon basically in true Scotty Young fashion after listening to that all of that he says like oh hey that was a uh, very very touching but I'm still going to torture you because I'm not your friend so I mean, we we all know Rocket Raccoon and Groot are best friends, but I just liked this issue in particular because I wanted to know more about his tattoos, more about the status quo that Rocket Raccoon and Groot are both going through, and this definitely delivered uh, on how Rocket Raccoon found Groot from issue one, or no, how Groot found Rocket Raccoon from issue one, um, because there was so many questions from that issue. This one definitely answered most of those. We still have the main question of like why the hell Rocket Raccoon is this Darth Vader like figure, but we're getting there. I mean, this is this is a really good book. I'm gonna have to give it an eight. It was it was really good. And last up for the week of February third, the new issue one of Spider Man, and obviously if anyone knows me, I love me some Scotty Young. So I had to pick up the Scotty Young variant. <coughs> and this is of course by Brian Michael Bendis who is the creator of Miles Morales Spider-Man from the Ultimate Universe. But anyway, uh, before we go into this, some back history story. I used to read Ultimate Spider-Man way back when. Um, not the Miles Morales, the Peter Parker Spider-Man. Um, and those were also, I believe, by Bendis. But I have no clue who this Miles Morales kid is. I know he's out there, I know he exists, uh, but I, I've never known who he was. I don't know his relationship with Peter Parker. All I know is a synopsis from what I've read from Secret Wars, because I didn't even read Secret Wars. I'm not a huge Marvel Universe kind of dude. So I know that the Ultimate Universe is dead, and now Miles Morales is now part of the 
I believe Earth 616 is what it's called in Marvel. So I know he's now the current Spider-Man of Earth 616. That's all I know. But anyway, with that, I have to say they do an exceptional job of introducing this character. Um, it starts off with what we see is the majority of the Avengers dead, rubble and destruction, and you just see Miles Morales' Spider-Man <coughs> facing off against Blackheart, who is the creature who uh, destroyed the Avengers. But then we go back in time, and this just this tiny little synopsis helped me so much. I mean, it just says like, oh, hey, yeah, Miles Morales told his secret to his best friend and his father, and here he is trying to deal with high school. I'm like, boom, that's all I needed to know. Like, I wanted to know who knows he's Spider-Man, and where is he now, and everything. So, it's great. Um, it's just basically him dealing with stuff in, in high school, just drama, dealing with friends, girlfriends, and then struggles at home with his parents, how the mom thinks he's doing drugs, um, the dad just says, just let him be, he's a young man. Artwork is amazing, by the way. Um, Miles Morales has to leave class because he hears sirens and he needs to turn into Spider-Man to save the day. And he becomes Spider-Man and he notices there's Blackheart destroying New York. So Blackheart's beating up Iron Man, the Avengers, everything like that. So Miles Morales has to pick up Captain America's shield, which is a great shot. I believe it's right here. And that was a pretty cool moment. And then Blackheart disappears because Miles Morales has the upper hand. He's using his new webbing and everything. And basically just boom tubes out of there. So now Miles Morales is left on the rubble of all the dead Avengers. And then we see Peter Parker come in saying, like, what have you done? Because from his point of view, it looks like Miles Morales just completely massacred the entire Avengers. All in all, really great jumping on point to Spider-Man. Obviously, it's an issue one, so it's should be a jumping on point but not too much history is needed to enjoy this book obviously if you know who miles morales is prior to this comic you're gonna have way more uh fun with it than i did but with my knowledge i i enjoyed this book a lot i'm gonna have to give it a nine for uh what an exceptional job it did for introducing me to a new character that i frankly didn't care about before now i just wanted a new spider-man book to read because I currently don't have any Spider-Man. So that was fun and I can't wait to see Peter Parker um, talking with Miles Morales about the events that occurred. So let's recap. This book gets a 9. Rocket Raccoon and Groot. I gave that an 8. <coughs> Obi-Wan and Anakin gave that a 7. Midnighter gave that one a 7 as well. Batman Beyond got a 7, and Batman and Robin Eternal gets a 6. And here is the comic shop news. Again, I am Dino Teeth from I and Team Gamers. This was my comic book reviews for the week of February 3rd, 2016. I hope you all enjoyed, and if you did, please like and subscribe our channel so you can see more videos like this. I hope you all have a great day, and thank you again.